Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on mitral regurgitation murmur, which is a systolic murmur. It is a high-pitched, pan-systolic, blowing murmur, heard loudest at the apex and radiating to the left axilla. It varies little with beat-to-beat -beat changes in stroke volume. Any damage or disruption to the mitral apparatus, including the mitral leaflets, chordae tendini, papillary muscles, and mitral annulus, can cause mitral regurgitation, so there are numerous potential causes. The more common causes are mitral valve prolapse, rheumatic heart disease, infective endocarditis, myxomatous degeneration, cardiomyopathy, and ischemic heart disease. For its general mechanism, to cause a mitral regurgitation murmur, the underlying disease or pathology must disrupt the mitral apparatus so that the valve does not close effectively. Thus during systole, a jet of blood moves back across into the left atrium. This turbulent regurgitant jet moving across an incompletely closed valve causes the murmur. Let's look at the mechanism in some specific causes. For rheumatic heart disease, thickening of the valve leaflets and stiffening of the commissures prevents normal closure of the mitral valve. Whereas in infective endocarditis, infection of the valve and the resulting inflammatory process can destroy any part of the valvular apparatus, rendering the valve unable to close or remain closed effectively during systole. Next for cardiomyopathy. In dilated cardiomyopathy of any cause, the left ventricle enlarges, as does the mitral annulus. Consequently, the mitral leaflets are unable to effectively cover the valvular orifice, allowing a regurgitant jet of blood back into the left atrium. Next in ischemic heart disease, a myocardial infarction may cause mitral regurgitation through a variety of mechanisms, such as papillary muscle rupture or elongation causing leaflet prolapse. Dysfunction of the papillary muscles, preventing tightening of the chordae tendini and effective closure of the mitral valve. Or regional remodeling and changes in ventricular size and function, that cause annular dilatation, and affect papillary muscle function and mitral leaflet coaptation. Another cause is myxomatous degeneration. A genetic defect in the composition of the collagen in the valvular apparatus allows stretching and elongation of the leaflets and chordae tendini. This increases the risk of the chordae rupturing and leaflets prolapsing into the left atrium on systole. For dynamic maneuvers mechanism, as with aortic regurgitation, any maneuver that increases systemic vascular resistance will increase pressure against forward flow, increase backward flow, and augment the mitral regurgitative murmur. A failure of the murmur to accentuate on this maneuvering may suggest the presence of an alternate diagnosis. This is a flow chart showing how maneuvers like squeezing hand grip affects the murmur. When the patient squeezes hand grip, there is arteriolar constriction. This increases systemic vascular resistance, causing more backflow across the mitral valve. Hence, the mitral regurgitation is accentuated. For its sign value, the characteristic mitral regurgitation murmur has moderate value in detecting the presence of mitral regurgitation, with a sensitivity of 56 to 75 percent, specificity of 89 to 93 percent. It does not, however, indicate the severity of the regurgitation. That's all for this video. Thank you.